10 magic rat blip 10 random magic cards that's the first time 108 videos the first time i've ever have to go like blip, 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 blip. yeah 10 random magic cards rated <laughs> day 108 i am a professional i promise it's big preview day today not only foundations but apparently a bunch of other sets we're going to see some previews from. So are you even watching this? Let's find out. First card of the day for a Friday is Semester's End. I like this thing, man. I like Semester's End. Four mana, three and a white for an instant. Exile any number of target creatures and or planeswalkers you control. At the beginning of the next end step, return each of them to the battlefield under its owner's control. Each of them enters the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter if it's a creature and an additional loyalty counter on it. If it's a Planeswalker. I feel like we've done this card before, but I don't feel like I've read through the entire thing on this series. So maybe we haven't done it. But yeah, this is like a one-shot Yorion effect for all your dudes at instant speed. So I thought that this could be like standard playable when it first came out. Um, I thought it could be Commander playable, but it has been reprinted in Commander products. Maybe that's what's keeping the prices down a good bit, but... I don't think this would be more than like 70 cents, even if it had never been reprinted, honestly. Um, just a cool card, though. It's undeniably a good magic card, I think. You know, like there's blinking in Commander is like obviously a pretty important thing to be able to do. Doing it at instant speed is very sick. Um, very sick. Uh, this also dodges sweepers. Not every like mass blink dodges sweepers. You know, it has to be they come back at the beginning of the next end step to dodge sweepers. This does. So it's also a protective spell in a way, you know, and I just, I think this is wonderful. You know, it's not as quite as good as Yorion. Yorion hits like all the permanents, I think, except for like lands, whatever it is. And this is only creatures or planeswalkers, but I still think this can do like potentially so much damage, uh, depending on what your board state looks like and how you set it up. So I like it. I'm going to give it a 5.2 and you cannot stop me. I think this is like four blink decks. This is one of the better blink effects like ever printed. Instant speed is ridiculous very good dude let's try it out generous gift is up next okay so the uh white beast within this card is this is three mana two and a white for an instant destroy target permanent its controller creates a three three elephant or green elephant creature token when was this originally printed was it modern horizons now i have to know how old are you? Yeah, Modern Horizons. Oh, oh, cool. All right, so this is still uh, a phenomenal magic card. <laughs> it really is. Still fetches a decent price tag, 50 cents or more. Uh, and this particular version, the time shift with the retro frame, looks really, really good. But I'm going to give Generous Gift. That's tough. It really is. A 5.7. It, when we hit like Beast Within, I'm going to give that a higher score. Because green decks don't have as many tools that are capable of taking out permanents, right? As white decks do. White decks have disenchant effects and decent removal and sweepers and blah, blah, blah. They take out basically every permanent type. Um, save for lands most of the time. So it's kind of hard to say Generous Gift is quite as good when color shifted. You know what I mean? But uh, Or you know, Beast Within is quite as good when color shifted. But it's still a good magic card. 5.7. 100%, I think. But we'll move on. Next rando card is Simeon or Shimeon Spectre. I always mess that up. Shimeon Spectre originally printed in Future Sight. Four mana, two and two black for a two two Spectre with flying. Whenever Shimeon Spectre deals combat damage to a player, that player reveals their hand. You choose a non land card from it. Search that player's graveyard hand and library for all cards with the same name as that card and exile those cards. And that player shuffles. So if it hits, it's disgusting. Because <laughs> if it hits an important card in their hand, they're done, you know, like this could easily ruin their game. And this was sparingly, I very sparingly played in sideboards uh, of that time period. So it does have like a teeny tiny, like nook in magic history, a little cubby hole in which to fit a mouse hole. Really again, we're very small pinprick hole that fits into, but was never quite good. You know, we've covered a lot of hypnotic specter variants <laughs> in this series so far. And this is one of the better, Variants, you know, Blazing Spectre, Doomsday Spectre, Abyssal Spectre. These never really saw all the standard play in the world. But again, Shimeon was occasionally around because it can just completely destroy your game plan. If you're too combo heavy, don't play enough removal, whatever. This can get to you. So I'm going to give this a 4.6. Something like that. I don't think it's anywhere near as good as it used to be. But, you know, it hits. Hits hard. Not going to do anything in Commander, really. It's just worse hypnotic specter. 
still. We got Retraction Helix coming up next. This is from Born of the Gods originally. A single blue mana for an instant. Until end of turn, return, or excuse me, until end of turn, target creature gains. Tap to return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Okay, I remember you vaguely. Um, so you put it on a creature that can untap, right? And then you just untap that guy a time or two and return this thing to your hand, return that thing to your hand, return this thing to your hand. Adorable. Um, but still not amazing. <laughs> and in terms of like unsummon effects and stuff, this does say non-land permanent rather than creature, so that's pretty good. But just in terms of bounce effects, you know, having to have a creature of your own in play is not super good. So I'm just going to slap like a 2.2 on this and, and note the combo potential, right? If you're comboing, it's like a 3.9. <laughs> it could be okay, but probably not that great. Next is Experimental Overload. It is a cool card. So it's originally printed in Corset 2021. Four mana, two, a blue, and a red for a sorcery. Create an XX blue and red weird creature token where X is the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. Then you may return an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand and exile experimental overload. Um, this was a deck back in Corset 2021. You guys remember? I know some of you are going to have either played or played against this deck or seen it on the channel because I think we played a little bit of it way back in the day, but always pretty cool, man. I feel like Experimental Overload had like one other creature or pseudo creature that it relied on, but now I can't remember. It's been so long. It's been like three or four years at this point, but just a very, very cool card um, that I, now that I see it, I kind of miss it. I really do, man. You get like a 6-6 six, six or an 8-8 eight, eight off of this and get back an important spell. Just uh, Overload was a cool deck that like never really like made it into real like true standard playability, but it was always fun to run on the arena from time to time. I'm going to give Experimental Overload the honorary 5. I'm just doing it, dude. One of the newer cards I'll ever give an honorary 5 to, but I just I have good times with this, man, and I kind of completely forgot it existed until I just read it again just now. And like that's sad. I want to bore this card into my brain because like we have some very good times together. This is a very cool magic card, dude. It really is. It really is. I like this guy a lot. But moving on, we're going to look at Phyrexian Arena. Wow. Okay, so originally printed in Apocalypse. Three mana, one and two black for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, you draw a card, you lose a life. Simple and clean, baby, but actually kind of simple and bloody. <laughs> simple and dirty. Uh, but has been great its entire lifespan. It still fetches like four bucks or so. Uh, for most of the versions of it. What's that 8th edition one? Yeah, okay. Um, just a great magic card that can go in a lot of decks running swamps, man. It almost doesn't matter what you're doing. You can throw this in. Um, and for what it's worth in standard, we do have access to this card and the Unholy Annex decks. I've seen a couple of them over the last week as I record this in standard. It's like week three and a half of Dustmorn standard. Um, see some people taking out the Unholy Annexes, like going down to like a one or two of Unholy Annex and putting in a one or two of Phyrexian Arena to make up the difference. And it's good to see Phyrexian Arena in standard decks again, because it was weird to be in a standard where Phyrexian Arena wasn't actually playable in the at the top tables. I think there are going to be arena players who are like, well, I played Phyrexian Arena, so did I, but we just hadn't really seen it in big time decks in a long time, like top tier decks. So, good to see it back. It's always been good. It will always be good. And since we're rating for Casual Commander, we're going to give it a pretty high score here. Phyrexian Arena gets a 7.24. 7.24 for Phyrexian Arena. Um, this is a phenomenal magic card. I don't think anybody's going to argue that. But next is Hardy Veteran. This is from Rivals of Ixalan. Two mana, one and a green for a 2-2 Human Warrior. As long as it's your turn... Veteran gets plus zero, plus two, baby. So that's two, two mana, two, four. But don't don't think you can use that ability to block. God forbid you have extra toughness when you have to block with it. This is not good. Um, 1.3. Ah, nah, it's it's better than that. There, It's better than that, sorry. Uh, 1.7, something like that. Because, you know, there's like two mana, two ones that don't do anything outside of being that. So I guess, let's give it some leeway here. 1.7. Next is Swamp. Basic lands get a five, they don't count. Uh, Oath of Ghouls. <laughs> Only ever printed an exit as part of the reserve list, and you can have it for a whole $3. This is a one and a black for an enchantment. During each player's upkeep, if there are more creatures in that player's graveyard than in target opponent's graveyard, the player may return a creature card from his or her graveyard to his or her hand. It's been a long time 
since I've read this. What's the Oracle text? At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player may or chooses target player whose graveyard has fewer cards in it than their graveyard does and is their opponent. <laughs> what is, this is one of those where the Oracle text is worse. I love when we see these. How ridiculous does that sound? At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player chooses target player whose graveyard has fewer creature cards in it than their graveyard does and is their opponent. The first player may return a creature card from their graveyard to their hand. The first player that we talked about in this example may return a creature card from their yard to their hand. Um, Still good. <laughs> this is still good. Um, So you just put a bunch of dudes in your graveyard and then when it's your turn, you always get to use it because <laughs> typically people will have fewer car, you know, creatures in their graveyard than you do if you're milling yourself or whatever. So you always get to use it and they very seldom do. Right. So cool card. Oh, God, <laughs> been a long time since I read Oath of the Ghouls. This wasn't one of the more popular ones back in the day, like when it first came out. And I guess I can see why I guess, but it's still pretty good value for what it's worth. So I'm going to give Oath of Ghouls a 5.56. 5.56 for this oath. Uh, <laughs> other oaths may get like an 8.5 when we get to them. But Oath of Ghouls is still it's pretty good. It's not bad. <laughs> Machino Runner is up next. This is just a lizard nowadays. Originally from Urza's Saga. This is 4 mana, 3 and a red for a 3-2 Vyashino. That cannot be blocked by only one creature. So it has menace. Is what we call that nowadays. Four minute, three, two minutes. You're just pretty bad, aren't you, bud? Um, 1.77. 1.77 for the runner, baby. Uh, next is Eternal Thirst. It's actually okay, man. It's from Magic 2015. If it's the card, I think it is. It's pretty good. Eternal Thirst is two mana, one and a black for an aura that enchants a creature. The creature has lifelink, and whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, put a plus one, plus one counter on this creature. It is this. It is this thing. Um, just two mana for lifelink is surprisingly not the worst thing you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> it's really not, but I wish it gave the card wings or the creature wings somehow. There's, this guy has wings and they look like aftermarket wings to me. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, he's got like a device on their back. You know, it, I don't know. Either way, <laughs> this, uh, I feel like I've resolved this card <laughs> multiple times. Maybe it was just like draft or pre-release i'm not sure but I'm, I'm almost certain i've resolved this card multiple times i've got history with it in my brain locked away somewhere uh but yeah two mana for lifelink at like sort of the floor of the card you could do worse than that and as the game goes on the creature will end up having you know plus three plus three plus four plus four and that's especially good combo with lifelink man i do not hate eternal thirst um 3.89 that sounds right. Let's do a bonus card, everybody. <laughs> I think we can do a bonus card today. It is. Ooh, Sapling Burst, baby. Sapling Burst is five mana, four and a green for an enchantment originally printed in Nemesis. This has fading seven. So it enters with seven counters on it. At the beginning of your upkeep, remove a fade counter. When you can't remove a fade counter anymore, sacrifice this thing. Remove a fade counter from Sapling Burst. Put a green sapperling creature token into play. It has this creature's power and toughness are each equal to the number of fade counters on sapperling burst. When sapperling burst leaves play, destroy all tokens put into play with sapperling burst. They can't be regenerated. So note that this is in world championship decks two years in a row. That's how good this card was. Because <laughs> often, throw it into play, it has fading seven. Take a counter off. I'll make a six six. Right? Take a counter off. That means I have two five fives. Take a counter off. I have three four fours. You know, the next turn rolls around and I can attack with them. They become three threes because that's how many fading counters remain on the thing. So I can make nine power on three guys for like five mana and they last a few turns. I can make, you know, ten power on two guys. They last more turns. It's so versatile. It really is. And especially in terms of rate for back then, um, this much potential power and toughness was uh bananas it really is just unheard of um card goes wide card goes tall card goes big card goes small so a lot of the times you would often you'd see people go all the way down to like you know one or two or three counters left on this the turn it came into play and if you go down to two counters you just have like four you know what are going to be like one ones or whatever which doesn't sound good, but again, you're going wide in that situation. And depending on like what the situation calls for, you might actually do that. So 
there's just so much fun stuff to do with this. Uh, there's pandemonium combos and impact trimmers combos and terror of the peaks combos and blah, blah, blah. So if you can, um, blink this, which I remember people doing back in the day, but if you can blink it, obviously it destroys all the tokens you put into play with it. Big freaking deal. Who cares? Because you got some sort of value in the ET beat off something else or whatever, but you know, you blink it, it comes back into play. You make more tokens. Um, it's really good with stuff like Fires of Yavimaya, Rhythm of the Wild, and anything else that gives dudes haste. Just fantastic card that has this massive place. As you can see, again, two World Champions decks, two years in a row. Um, this massive place in Magic history. So, Sapperling Burst, I'm going to give you, even by modern standards, like a 7.1. I just, you're, you're a great... You're a great bonus card, dude. I'm glad we got to this. I love Sapling Burst. I miss it. Anyway, I'm going to miss you. Till tomorrow. Bye.